Welcome back to another edition of Tailgate Talk here at Sun Media Group, sunjournal.com. Justin Pelletier along with Randy Whitehouse and uh, Cal Oaks and Heidi. Where's Oaks? Uh, he says he's sick. I think he's just mourning the Patriots choking away a game now. Hey, your team, not mine. <laughs> We're here at Fitzpatrick Stadium outdoors and uh, this scene is going to get a lot more hectic here on Saturday with the three state championships starting at 11.06. AM uh, here at Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland. Class A going first, Class C in the middle, Class B going in the matinee, or the, excuse me, the evening game. Uh, Deer go, of course, the Class C game with the matinee. We got here, we have six teams left, two in each class, and let's start with the ones we uh, we were at. Deer go, Mr. Oaks again, not here, but he was at that one, he got to see that one. Deer go kind of silenced, silenced a few doubters, didn't he, this week? Are you looking at me for that? I absolutely am. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say I was a doubter. I was more of a believer in Yarmouth. But, uh, you know, and as, as I was driving to the 11 game, Yarmouth took a quick 7 nothing lead. And I'm thinking, oh boy, we got to take it to Oaks this week. But uh, it, Derrigo just dominated that game right after that. Uh, I guess get the butterflies out, although they're usually a slow starting team. And just uh, took over that game. Uh, Tyler Chasen uh, running the ball up the middle uh, was a big factor there. And, their defense buckled down completely, took Yarmouth's speed out of the equation, and, uh, uh, you know, I mean, like you said, there was any doubt about uh, Gary Go being the best team in the Western Sea. Uh, they erased all of that on Saturday, just extremely impressive. On the other side of the ball, you're going to have Foxcroft Academy again. Foxcroft, 14-13 winner over John Babs this weekend, and again, a, a normally a very physical, run-oriented, pounded up the middle kind of team, but this is a little bit of a different Foxcroft Academy team this year. Yeah, it is. Uh, a little more finesse, uh, a, little, a little more athleticism, a little more speed. Uh, similar to Dirigo. I think Dirigo might be a more physical team than they are, but they certainly have their short shared speed as well. Uh, they have a quarterback in Stroud who's similar to Nick Crutchfield, the you know, Dirigo quarterback. He can beat you with his legs and beat you with his arm, and uh, their offense revolves around him. Uh, they've been here before. Dirigo has not. That could be a little bit of a factor as well. They're a little, although maybe not quite this group, they're used as a school to being down here, so they know what the, the routine's all about. So, uh, especially playing that late game, it can be tough hanging around, sitting around, waiting, waiting for that late game. That, that can be kind of tough playing at night. But uh, I, I think that's going to be a, an excellent match. And of course, the one we saw at Levitt uh, in Turner, uh, Levitt defeating Gardner 13 to nothing, and uh, really that Levitt line really held defensively held Gardner in check, didn't allow Forrest Chadwick to go anywhere. Uh, really after that first little bit of a burst that Gardner had off the top, getting about 60 yards or so in their opening drive before they stalled in the red zone, Levitt just held the fort from there and, and allowed Josh Strickland to be Josh Strickland. Yeah, Gardner pounded it up the middle early on. They spread out the, the Levitt defensive line, which Levitt wasn't really used to. Uh, and uh, after they had some success early on, uh, the Levitt coaches said, told their guys up front, just make plays. Just go after the ball. Don't worry about being disciplined. Don't worry about staying in your lane or in your gap or anything like that. Just go after the football. And, and uh, the guys on the outside, uh, Kim Griffin, Zach Frost, Buck Butler, they absolutely set the edge. They took away the outside running game for Gardner. And once uh, they, they plugged up the middle, uh, it was pretty much lights out. And as you said, they did a ter terrific job on Forrest Chadwick. Pressured him all afternoon. The passing game was a non-factor for Gardner. On the other side of the football, Josh Strickland, uh, you know, uh, they, they overcame some turnovers, uh, the defense came up big. Uh, Four fumbles in that third quarter. Yeah, it took away, took away the momentum uh, from Gardner after getting those re uh, fumble recoveries. Uh, so you got to credit the defense with that, but then you got to credit Josh Strickland with just taking the ball game over. The guy's just a, a, a tremendous as a ball. He's a great combination of power and speed, and uh, he's come up big for them in the playoffs this year. It's going to be a big part of the matchup with Cape on Saturday. Speaking of Cape Elizabeth, they took care of Mountain Valley. Mountain Valley held the lead with five minutes to go in that game. And Cape Elizabeth, uh, one swipe of the arm, one long bomb from Ezra Wolfinger, and that was it. Uh, they put, put them into uh, in the scoring territory, and then Tom Foden just took it in from there. Cape Elizabeth, how, do, how does Cape Elizabeth match up with, uh, with I'm sorry, no, with Levitt? <laughs> now, uh, it, it's one of those matchups we've been waiting for all season. All right. Well, it's with Cape, it starts with their big three, uh, quarterback Ezra Wolfinger, uh, the running back Tom Foden, and Wolfinger's favorite uh, receiver Finn Melanson. 
Uh, Mountain Valley did a very effective job, not just last week, but in their last regular season game of shutting them down. Yet Cape still, well, they they shut Fordham down the first game, the passing game. The passing right. game is what burned them, and right. that's what Mountain Valley came uh, became susceptible to in, in this one again. Late, it was late, that secondary. Late, does, late. Does, does Levitt's secondary have what it takes against that passing game? I, th I think the secondary is better than Mountain Valley's secondary. I think the key, though, is they're up front, they're, they are much better than Mountain Valley. And they can put pressure, pressure. on the pass. Yeah. No question about it. I think they're better up front than Cape Elizabeth. And I think they're going to be in Wolfinger's grill for much of the day. Uh, so, uh, you know, it depends on you know, a lot of times they like to, they're, they're kind of like the Patriots. They like to take away what a team does best. You mean so they go to Florida on fourth and two? Well, well, not exactly. Well, they've done some things like that. But, you know, if they decide they want to shut down Foden, that's what they'll focus on. Shut, shutting down Foden and then leaving the rest of it to their pass rush, you know, sending four, no more than four or five guys out the court. Now. They decide they want to start Wolfinger, then they'll do that. Uh, I suspect that they're going to want to shut down the running game first, and I think that's what Cape's going to do on the other side. Class A, real quick, we have uh, Wyndham, a seven to six. They grinded out over Chevrolet this week against a Bangor team that features a uh, uh, an All-State back in Lonnie Hackett. What do you see this matchup, especially in this turf? Well, it's interesting. I mean, two diff different pedigrees. Uh, you know, Wyndham a new program, first time down here. Uh, you know, Bangor has been here many times before, and sort of have that uh, that background, know what to expect, and as you mentioned, they do have Lonnie Hackett, uh, All-State back, maybe a, a Fitzy finalist, uh, if anybody from Eastern Maine stands a chance to be in a Fitzy finalist, he's the guy, should be interested to see him run here on this turf. On the on the Wyndham side, just a very resilient team, they just kept coming back, we were talking about Thornton Academy being better, Deering being better, Bunny being better, Shepard's being better, all, all through the course of the season. They just kept coming back, coming back with uh, Jackson, the quarterback, now so running back, uh, uh, a nice double threat that they have there. Uh, you now, we'll see who has more pressure. I think that's why it comes down. Who's going to have more pressure on them coming in here? If one of them feels the pressure, I think they could be in trouble. But regardless, I think it's going to be one of the best A finals that we've had in quite a while. And that's going to start early, 11.06, the A game, the C game at 2.30, and 6 o'clock prime time for Class B, Levitt. And Cape Elizabeth, I think that's kind of the way they set it up on purpose. Either way, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great, uh, great day of football here at Fitzpatrick Stadium. For all of us at Sun Media Group that have been a part of this, for Amber Waterman and Darren Slover and Jose Leva and Russ Dillingham behind the camera, Patty Berry back at the office, for Cal Oaks who still hasn't materialized, and uh, for Randy Whitehouse. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. Justin Pelletier saying so long, and until next season. See ya. Next season, we gotta do it again. Yeah.